Hi, I'm George Woodbury from the College of the Sequoias in Visalia, California. And in this video, I'm going to go over a section on Introduction to Algebra. We'll discuss variable expressions, properties of real numbers, and terms and coefficients. A variable is a letter that's used to hold the place of a number that changes or is unknown. For instance, in the formula a equals pi r squared, the variable r is used to stand for a radius of a circle that changes depending on the circle. Also, if we are trying to figure what number plus 5 equals 8, we can put a variable in the place of that number until we can figure out what it is supposed to be equal to. Building variable expressions is one of the most important skills uh, in an algebra course. Being able to translate from English to variables or English to algebra is very important and a lot of students struggle with this. It's crucial when we start solving word problems being able to set up the equation. So let's take a little time and focus on how this is done. All right, here's four different phrases that all translate to addition. A number plus five or increase by five or five more than a number or the sum of a number and five, all translate to be x plus five. Um, notice I used the variable x. I could just as easily have used n or any other letter of my choice. We typically use x for variables, but uh, again, that's up to you. Uh, here are some phrases for subtraction, including a typo. That should be a seven. A number minus seven, decrease by seven, seven less than a number, or the difference of a number and seven, all translate to be x minus seven. This phrase here is very troubling for students. Uh, a lot of times students see that and they want to write it in the order they see it, seven minus x. However, that is actually backwards. Think about it this way. If I were to ask you what's seven less than 10, you would tell me three. And we get 7 less than 10 is 3 by subtracting 10 minus 7, not 7 minus 10. So the order listed here is the correct order. The way I have my students uh, handle this, when they read 7 less than, the first thing they do is write down minus 7. And then they're going to fill in the space in front by what 7 is less than. And here, it's just 7 is less than a number, so I insert the x. Uh, here are a few phrases for multiplication. Uh, 8 times a number, 8 multiplied by a number, or the product of 8 and a number, all translate to be 8x. Uh, one special one that we want to watch out for is the phrase twice a number. Twice is a multiplication problem uh, multiplying by 2. So twice a number would be 2x. For division, we could either have uh, divided by or the quotient of a number in 4 to indicate division, and that would be x divided by 4 or x over 4. Okay, let's try an example. Write an algebraic expression for 9 less than twice a number. Again, when I see 9 less than, that's telling me minus 9. 9 less than what? Twice a number. Well, if we let the number be represented by, by the variable x, twice a number would be 2x. So this expression translates to be 2x minus 9. Evaluating an algebraic expression is roughly telling me what an expression is worth for a particular value of the variable. In this case, I want to know what 3x minus 7 is equal to when x is replaced by negative 9. To start the evaluation process, replace the variable by a set of parentheses and inside those parentheses put our value for the variable. Now it's an order of operations problem. 3 times negative 9 is negative 27 and negative 27 minus 7 is negative 34. Here's another problem with a trick to it. Uh, when we see the variable appearing twice, we have to substitute negative 4 twice. But it's very important that we start off with parentheses for our variable. 
because when I put in negative 4, I need to know whether the base is just 4 or negative 4, and in this case it is negative 4. Uh, negative 4 squared is 16, 5 times negative 4, that's a minus 20, and then minus 8, we work left to right, and we end up with negative 12 here. The associative property tells us that we can group uh, add-ins or factors in any order we like. For instance, suppose we're trying to add three numbers together. Well, I can group A and B together first and then add C to that second, or I can group B and C first and add A to that second. That's the associative property. That also works for multiplication. The next property, the commutative property, tells us that we can add or multiply in any order we like. For instance, A times B is the same as B times A. That's the commutative property of multiplication, and it also holds for addition. Uh, 8 times 7 is the same as 7 times 8. 3 plus 5 and 5 plus 3 are the same. Uh, with these two properties, associative and commutative, note that um, they don't hold for subtraction or division. They hold true only for multiplication and addition. The third property, the distributive property, is a pretty big one. It basically says the following. If we have an expression like a times the quantity b plus c, it tells me that I can multiply the a into the parentheses, a times b, and add that to a times c. Same thing holds true with if it's subtraction inside. Uh, let me show you why this is true. Suppose we had 3 times the quantity 4 plus 5. Order of operations would tell us to add the 4 plus 5 first, and then multiply to get 27. The distributive property tells us that we can multiply 3 by both 4 and 5 first. Uh, 3 times 4 plus 3 times 5. 3 times 4 is 12, 3 times 5 is 15, and I get the same result, 27. In this arithmetic case, it would be better to do the problem the first way. But if I had an expression like 3 times x plus 5, I can't add x and 5 together, so if I'm going to simplify this, the only thing I can do is distribute the 3 into the parentheses. Right, let's take a look at some examples. In this first one, I'm going to distribute 5 to both terms in the parentheses. There can be more than 2. There can be addition or subtraction. Anything goes here. But the number ha can't have a sign between it and the parentheses. 5 times 2x is 10x plus... 5 times 13 is 65. If the constant in front of the parentheses is negative, we have to distribute that negative sign with the number. So negative 3 is what we're distributing. Negative 3 times 7x is negative 21x. And negative 3 times negative 2, positive 6. So negative 20x, 21x plus 6. Uh, here, I've got an algebraic or variable expression that has four terms. Basically, you can think of terms as being separated by addition, or by addition and subtraction, if you'd like. I have four terms here. 7x cubed, x squared, negative 9x, and 20. Each term can have a number part called the coefficient, and a variable part that we call the variable part. So again, a coefficient is the number part of a term. So the coefficient of this first term is 7. The coefficient of the second term, a little tricky at first, remember if we don't see a number multiplied by x squared, the coefficient is going to be 1. Uh, here, it's not 9, but negative 9, and the last coefficient is 20. Four terms, coefficients are 7, 1, negative 9 and 20. 
two terms are called like terms if they contain the same variables with the same exponents, like 3x and 4x, but not like 3x and 4y, different variables, 3x squared and 4x, uh, same variable but different exponent, or even 3xy squared and 4x squared y. Same variables, even the same exponents sort of, but they're not with the same variable. The only term that's like a term with xy squared is another term with xy squared. So these are not like terms. We can combine like terms by adding the coefficients and keeping the variable part. Think of it this way. Um, if we wanted to add 3x and 4x, we're told that this is the same as 7x. Think of it this way. Say you had three balls, and you had four balls, and you wanted to combine all of those together. What do we have? We have seven balls. The number of them changes, but the object itself doesn't change. A couple of examples. Uh, Simplify by combining like terms. I have a 7x. I go looking for a like term, and I have one here. 7x minus 2x is 5x. I lightly cross those off because I've used those up. And now I start looking at negative 9 and negative 11, which are also like terms, and they combine to be negative 20. In the second example, 5a minus 9a is negative 4a. Uh, negative 4b plus 10b is plus 6b. And I have one term left, negative 3c, and I don't have anything to combine it with, so I just bring it along for the ride and write it down. Here's a pretty challenging example. This combines both the distributive property and combining like terms. We're going to distribute 6 and negative 4 first, and when we're done distributing, then we'll go ahead and combine like terms. 6 times 7x minus 6 times 5. Now distribute the negative 4. Negative 4 times 9x is negative 36x, and negative 4 times 8 is negative 32. Bring down the negative 13, and it's time to combine like terms. Two terms with x, 42 minus 36 gives me 6x. Then combining the three constant terms, the terms without variables, combine those together and I get negative 75. So this simplifies to be 6x minus 75. If you're in my online class, the suggested homework, section 1.8, problems 1 through 10, the vocabulary, and then 11 through 87, every other odd. If you have any questions or comments, or if you have a request for a video that I can put on YouTube, you can reach me through the contact page on my website, and the address is georgewoodbury.com. Thanks for watching, and good luck.